And we're back with the second half of our get together here on Perspectives today. Our guest is Cody Bryant. Cody, good to have you, my friend. Yeah, thank you for having me here. Um, so that folks know what we're going to be talking about, you're involved with what some would call an impossible, an, uh, just absolutely impossible monumental feat. And that's to move uh, I-244 uh, out of Greenwood. So it's just not there anymore. That sounds impossible to pull off. Can you do it? Yes, uh, it's been done in other communities. Uh, so it's definitely something that can happen here in Tulsa. You know, I think more of it comes down to whether there's the political will uh, here in Tulsa to get it done. You know, especially with the infrastructure bill that's been passed recently, there is capital outline for projects like this. So it's definitely something that's more attainable now than ever in the past. I understand that when uh, when I-244 went through, it took out about 3,000 homes and about 500 businesses. Am I correct on that? Yes, somewhere around there. Good Lord. Well, yeah. it's going to take a lot of money. What kind of money are we talking about? And where is it going to come from? Yep. So the uh, federal infrastructure bill has at least a billion dollars outlined to uh, specifically to projects like this. And so they're highway removal projects. And that billion dollar allocation, a part of it goes to study grants and uh, the about 80 percent of it goes to actual capital construction uh, projects. And so this is a part of the infrastructure bill that can only be spent on money like this. So that's something I've been talking to people in the community about is that this isn't taking money away from, say, fixing potholes or, say, mm -hmm. fixing some of the other highway interchanges in town. This is money that is specifically allocated to projects like this that can only be used for that. So it's something if Tulsa doesn't look into utilizing that money, it's going to go to another community. Uh, so there's no reason why we shouldn't at least, you know, discuss it and study it, see if it's something plausible to do here in Tulsa. Sounds like a man with a plan here. If they are able to do that, have you got any kind of a feel for how long it would take to remove it? You know, some of it's going to come down to community input. Uh, you know, there are studies that need to be done. Uh, Representative Goodwin uh, had just submitted a bill uh, recently that's going to allocate at least $400,000 that would be the 20% local matching funds to begin the study process of this. And so once we get traffic studies done and engineering studies and things like that, there'll be a period for community input, community meetings. So some of that's gonna depend upon, you know, some how much feedback comes into the community. Uh, so say it's something that we wanted to pursue, uh, you know, you're talking at least probably two, three years down the road before you would see any sort of construction. All right. If and that's a that's a big if, yep. Because I'm one of those that believes it can happen. If you're able to pull this off, if the forces are strong enough to muster, get the money together to remove it, that frees up a lot of space in the Greenwood area. That means businesses can come back, homes can be rebuilt. Is there a group on the ground ready to go to work on that part of it? Yes, yeah, so that's something uh, I've been working with uh, Representative Goodwin specifically about uh, looking into how, what would be the mecha mechanisms that would be put into place in order to, you know, receive the land back and then also develop it afterwards for community good. And so we've been looking into things like land trusts and other things that are more uh, community focused and nonprofit focused. And that way, some of the profits that go that would come from real estate development, and new infill on this land would actually go back to people in the community in Greenwood. And you could specifically look for families that had businesses and own homes that were torn down for the highway, that then they would be the beneficiaries out of some of the redevelopment in this area. And it's very important that people understand this money is not being taken away from taxes you've paid that were designed for, I don't know, like you said, potholes and that sort of thing. This is a major effort and it's going to, it's going to mean a lot of jobs. Yep. Yeah. You know, and you're talking about something where you could rebuild back, you know, hundreds of thousands of square feet of commercial space. 
uh, you know, thousands of homes and all of that goes back on the tax rolls too. So this is something that's good for the city, the county, the state as well, because that means more sales tax dollars, that means more property taxes. You know, right now ODOT owns almost as much land in the IDL as the entire area inside the inner dispersal loop. And so that's some of the most productive land in the state in terms of, you know, tax revenue. So you're talking about returning a significant economic driver back into our community by doing that. When my wife and I were down there just the other night uh, and trying to navigate the area, and it's not easy. This will make it and absolutely facilitate the ease to navigate the Greenwood District once again. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, once the highway is not there anymore, you're going to be able to rebuild the historic street grid that was there prior to the highway. Mm -hmm. And so when you think about that, you know, just driving through the regular parts of downtown, it's easier to walk between places. You know, it's easier to get on your sure. bike and go back and forth. And so when the highway is not there, you're removing significant barriers to just traffic flow and pedestrian flow. So it's something that would actually benefit the community. It might actually make people that are going downtown easier to get downtown than the highway system that's there now. So certainly going to do the Greenwood district a big a big favor. Yes. To open it up again. Any idea how long it will take to complete it? Uh, you know, construction would probably take somewhere around 12 to 24 months. Uh, you know, that it's pretty typical for most, uh, you know, kind of construction projects. You know, you look at, you know, new uh, street construction around Tulsa, because that's essentially what would happen is once the highway was removed and demoed, then it would be, be like rebuilding any other city street that's, you know, happens around town now. So. Well, you had to be working with some of the groups that were, I don't know, part of the original idea to get rid of it part of uh, uh, other groups that were saying, okay, here's what we're going to do with it when it's finished. So you have an ear to the pavement, if you will, with all of these organizations, don't you? Yeah. And, you know, that's something we've been doing as well. Uh, I'm a member of Thai Pros within the executive team this year. And so that's where we kind of started talking about it was within Thai Pros as well. And we've gone around to these various neighborhood organizations, you know, so we've talked to Kendall Whittier, Crutchfield, uh, the Heights neighborhood, uh, business owners in the Arts District. You know, so we have uh, downtown coordinating council, pretty much anything and everything that is in this general vicinity, we've kind of touched and talked to people in this area and they're all in agreement that they don't feel like the highway really benefits anybody at the moment, so. I know, I know that. And, and what's interesting is if you're down there trying to navigate, and I'm talking, when I say down there, I mean, where the I-244, blocks everything. If you're down in that part of the Greenwood district, you can almost visualize the robust, romantic flavor of a district coming back to life. Yep. And, you know, really what's kind of hampering growth right now is the highway. You know, it's such a big physical barrier that's there. Uh, it takes up so much land, you know, especially if you compare it to, say, the Broken Air Expressway that's on the south side of downtown, given that 244 is elevated, it, you know, it creates such a different type of barrier to redevelopment and moving any of that redevelopment north to as opposed to something like, you know, the highway, other parts of the IDL that are actually below ground. You know, it's a I very would, big contrast. I would urge anyone who has not yet tried to visit that area where 244 is resting. Take a Saturday morning, go down there. Look as much as you can, look at what the structure does, how it impedes the growth of the area, how it interferes with so much of people living and prospering again, the way they were many, many years ago before you know everything just blew up. Uh, and uh, and so many people lost their lives and so many there was so much damage but this is a chance from for real positive growth in the city of Tulsa and like you said the tax base will just explode yeah and you know something else too that i i think people may not necessarily understand is that uh, the turnpike authority is finishing the gilcrease loop 
too. So when you're thinking about regional traffic flow, that has been a big concern that I've heard from a lot of people mm-hmm. is that you're going to be able to, if you're going east and west from say Arkansas to Stillwater, once the Gilcrease Loop is completely finished, you can take either the Gilcrease Loop through north, like going around Tulsa International, or even say if you're around Catoosa, you could take I-44 south and go around. And that really only adds about three minutes to your regional commute versus awesome. going straight through downtown. So there are multiple alternative routes regionally too that doesn't impede regional traffic flow. The growth factor is just gonna, it's just enormous. And the potential is enormous as well. We have about one minute left. Uh, Cody, I, I would appreciate uh, a very quick, in the one minute, if you don't mind, a very quick uh, synopsis about what to expect when final approval is given. So say final approval is given, you know, it'll go out to bid. Um, That's something Representative Goodwin is actually working on is ways to bring in minority contractors as well into this project. And so it'll go out to bid, construction will start. Uh, Then you'll start seeing some of these community mechanisms come in, say the land trust will go out and start working with uh, developers in the community to come in, start planning redevelopment processes to that. Once the street grid's rebuilt, and then you'll start seeing more ground up construction happen and, you know, just really see this district be able to flourish again. This is exciting stuff, my friend. We're going to be keeping an eye on you and hopefully everything that's going to be going on down there. Mr. Cody, uh, I appreciate you being here. Thank you. We'll talk again down the road. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks for having me. See you folks next time. Bye-bye.